Hi everybody, I hope everyone's doing well. Today's October 6th, 2023 and it is Friday. <laughs> Friday. And I'm here to do a let's talk video, let's chat video uh, on my health quest. I did not come October 1st. Ugh. And so October 8th, I don't think I'll be able to come. Not sure, but it is my birthday this Sunday, October 8th. I will be 55 years old and we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that. I want to talk about that a little bit, but there's a lot of things I want to say in this video. I've already tried to record this one time and it was an hour long. No need for that. No need for that. So I'm going to try and get through this guys. So you're not here forever in a day. All right, let's get going with this. Let's talk about the challenge really quick. Cause I really want to focus in on that. The strength training challenge that I did, I completed the 25 days. I completed that and I ended strong and I really want to talk about that. Because, um, let me, let me just say the last day, the last day that we did, uh, on the, the 25th day, we did a 75 count plank and we did it at the beginning of the challenge. And when she said, when, when I turned on the, the, um, you know, on YouTube, I put it on here I, and she said, okay guys, you know, our last day, congratulations for being here. We are going to finish strong. We're going to do 75 count, 75 count plank. And we're going to do it at the beginning. I know you can do this. And I went, what? Uh, up until that point, we've only done, uh, the highest we got to was 60 count. Um, never 70, and we were gonna do 75. And I said, okay, let's do this. Let's do this. So I did it, guys. I did the whole thing without putting my knees down. At the end, like 20, 20 count, like the last 20 count, Ooh, I was feeling it. I was feeling it. And I had to dig, dig really, really deep. And that's what I want to talk about, guys. I did not see this coming when it comes to this challenge. I don't know if I made mention that on my last video, but this challenge has really done something for me mentally. It has really made me uh, think of so many things differently. And the gist of it is this, when I was digging deep to get into working a particular muscle to failure in particular those they're not very many there's only a couple that she would do where you where you get to your threshold of your muscle uh but you keep you you take it maybe 10 more seconds from that point and until it fails on you and you can't and when i was first doing those i didn't quite get there but when i started to get there and i started really concentrating and focusing on that it has done something to me that I did not see coming. It has spilled into my other parts of my life. And I'm telling you, it makes me feel like I can do it. I didn't think I was capable and I was capable and I did it. And it, it's not, doesn't get easier. It really doesn't because <laughs> every time we do it, whether it's those, those exercises where you take that muscle to failure or the other ones where you do sets of, of things, um, it, it doesn't matter. It just, I have to dig from inside of me and say, don't quit now. Don't quit now. Don't quit now. Go, go, go. Cause you try to keep up with her as much as you can. At least I did. And wow, that really has spilled into my life, into my life because I see I can do it. I can do it. And it's more than strength training for me. It's absolutely more than that. It's taking me, my mind to places where I haven't been in a long time, really, really haven't. Um, and I don't know, it's just, I, I, I have a hard time describing it because I don't want to make it sound so dramatic, but it really is dramatic for me. It really is. I was telling my husband, you know, it just makes me believe in myself where I haven't in so long, in so long. It's, I've been working on my life. I've been working this year to change my circumstances, to change the stress in my life, to look at problems differently. So many things I'm telling you that I've been really, really working on. And then this comes along, the strength training. It came on because I wanted to tone up my muscles. I heard it helps when you're menopausal and you want to keep that muscle going, you know, for a long time I've been doing cardio, right? So, um, I just didn't see this coming. You, you really dig deep inside and you pull from inside and you do it. And 
I can, it just makes me feel like I can do anything else that I set my mind to. The other thing really quickly before I kind of jump piggyback on that is I've also started already lifting 10 pounds and I'm not sure if I said that in uh, the last time I came to you guys, I believe it was the 24th of September. Uh, I, I don't know if I was already doing the 10 pounds then, but I can tell you I've been doing 10 pounds, lifting 10 pounds. Not every exercise we do with 10 pounds. Uh, sometimes we do have to go back down to five pounds, but I never been at 10 pounds. And so when we, when we have to pick the heaviest weight for us, uh, whether that be the five pounds, which is, you know, fine or three pounds or eight pounds, um, I now pick the 10 pounds when I, when she calls for the heavier weight, when we're working on them triceps, them little muscles back here, then we go down to five and believe me, they're fine. Um, but eventually I would like to do those triceps maybe with an eight pound but I'm not there yet, but I definitely lift 10 pounds. I never thought that I would lift 10 pounds. I never thought that I would push my muscle to failure. I never thought that. I never thought that I was capable of a 75 count plank pulling in on everything inside of me to stay in that plank and not give up because you really want to sometimes, you know? And I'm not telling you that every exercise I nailed it I mean there were times where I got to failure a lot quicker and I had to stop but the fact that I'm just going forward and forward and forward and pushing and pushing and pushing it's spilling into my other parts of my life aside from the fact that I am seeing my body change I am seeing my arms change I am seeing um, a lot of differences in my life in, in my in my body the energy level and all that good stuff. So it's just, it's just been amazing and I don't want to stop. <laughs> I don't want to stop. So, um, speaking of not stopping, I'm now doing a five day challenge with her. Uh, I will link everything below the 25 day playlist and then the five day playlist on this one. It is, they are a little bit tougher. Uh, they're piggybacking off of the 25 day challenge these five days. Um, and, and they're doing different, we're doing different exercises with her, um, uh, and things like that. And I like it. I like it. Um, it's very, very challenging. And, um, yeah. So, and then I will continue after the five days, I will come back and let you know what I'm doing, but she has a whole calendar every month. She'll have a calendar and, and it's for beginners and intermediate and you just apply what's for you. So I will jump into that workout after the five days. So by next week I should be jumping into whatever day there are on the calendar. Uh, and I'm thinking I'm going intermediate. I don't know. Maybe I'll stick with the beginner still. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'll let you know. But yeah, I just want to let you guys know that um, this is more than just strength training for me. It really is a lot more than that. It's just knowing I'm capable and pushing myself. And it just speaks in other aspects of my life. So it's, it's just good. So speaking of turning 55, I kind of want to jump on all that with this. You know, every year for many years, even maybe in my 40s, um, when my birthday came close, I didn't really per se, I don't want to sound like I'm not grateful for my life. But when you live a perpetual state of chronic stress, a perpetual state of just sort of getting by in your day and kind of that kind of thing, um, and, and you really can't pinpoint it at those times, what's going on for me, turning another year has always been sort of a reflection of everything I missed. Okay. Of everything that I let go of missed opportunities. And so every time I would turn a different year, it wasn't always, it was gratitude. Yes. But thinking about just wasted, like I said, opportunities, and you still, you're jumping into a new year and you still don't have it figured out. You still don't understand it. You still haven't dealt with it, you know, with it. And I can tell you jumping into 55 this Sunday, I am looking forward to it. I have never been this happy turning an age like I have like I am at 55. It's been oh years, not even in my forties. And I can tell you because I'm able to look back at 54 and everything I've been working in this year, this year I put in the work and yes, this year, this year I found that source, which I will come back and talk to you. 
uh, at some point. I, I am. I, I'm getting very ready to tell you a lot of things that has been impeding my health, not just physical, but mental and spiritual. Uh, and I got to that to that point and I've been dealing with that and then I've been dealing with my chronic stress. It hasn't been easy. No, gosh. Oh, it has not been easy. My spiritual growth there you go. My spiritual growth has been amazing. So just all around and then ending it with strain training because, um, you, I started to see my life changing. I started to see things happening, but when I started doing the strain training, it, it was an accomplishment that I haven't had in a long time. You know, when you do things and you feel like you accomplished them, right? You feel like you're accomplishing them. Uh, it, it does. It helps you, right? It helps you. But I haven't felt that in a long time. That's why every year turning that year, it, it was it was that. It was looking back and not the missed opportunities, the missed accomplishments. And yeah, I mean, there are things in my year that I accomplished, but I didn't, they were clouded by all this other stuff. And with strain training, uh, and then all the work that I've been doing, it's like with strain training, I really feel accomplished because I'm doing it, you know? And then now I'm looking back at everything that I've been dealing with. Like I've been dealing with it head on. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling that accomplishment. I really, really am. And it feels good. So going into 55, it just feels good. It just feels good. And I hope that made sense. Um, I could be here uh, a, a long time talking to you guys. And, uh, I have a YouTube book. I have a little book. I left it over there. I don't think I brought it. No, but I have a book and I've been writing things down that I really want to come and share with you guys. But, um, that's kind of what it is a little bit in the nutshell, as far as strength training, it's just feeling accomplished every time I finish. And that's something I have not felt in years, years, and then seeing the result of that accomplishment. And then it's extending it to being able to look at my life and saying, you know, look at all this stuff. You, you've got it in you to, to do this stuff, the hard work, you got it in you and you can accomplish, you can accomplish things. Maybe not everything. We can't all do everything, but we can set out to try and do it right and really give it your all. So there's that. My husband is home today. He's home. He is actually making me a cake, a keto friendly cake, low carb cake. I had told him, you know, I really am trying to make this a lifestyle change. And that's another thing really, really quickly that brings me to this thing um, before we get into the cake. Um, I really am tr really feeling like for the first time that not, I'm just not just losing the weight. But I'm doing the work around it. Um, the weight to me is becoming really that secondary effect of everything that I'm doing around um, to, to get the weight off, right? Reducing my chronic stress, getting on the right medications for my BP, which we'll get into. Uh, and so many things. I thought somebody was coming in. Uh, and I'm looking back now at, you know, I've always sort of been on a diet. <laughs> you know, I've always been overweight. But but I really want to express this. I've always been somebody who anyways enjoys uh, learning about the relationship between food and the body. Like, I love that. I love that science. I really, really do. Um, put me in a book like that and I'll read and read and read. Uh, and I want to get really into that now that my mind is clearing up and I see like my horizon, you know, I could start seeing my horizon and what I really want to do um, and get into, you know, but uh, looking back at all the diets that I've done, uh, whether it be keto, whether it be Mediterranean, whether, whatever, whatever I've done in the past, even going all the way back to high school where you did the egg diet and did all kinds of stuff. Uh, nothing was ever going to really be long lasting. Um, it was just all about a means to an end. In other words, do this to get this result, right? Which is getting the scale down and fitting into your pants and whatnot. Uh, which could be a great motivator. I'm not knocking that at all, but something permanent. I finally see that in my life. Like I finally see that in my life, that lifestyle change, that approach to, uh, health. 
it's finally becoming um, like who I am, like internally and doing things differently, which, like I said, dealing with all of this stuff to get to a healthier weight, a healthier weight, you know? And I feel like this for me is like a lifestyle change. And that brings me to the cake is that, you know, uh, I was going to make my cake. I, I had already planned to make my cake. Uh, but my hubby was sitting down there like two days ago and he was looking through the recipes and he says, I want to make you this cake. What do you think? And he was, let me do that for you. And I said, okay, you know, so he took the day off, like I said, and he's making the cake and doing other things. Um, and he's going to make me uh, stuffed cabbage. Uh, we're going to, um, I think, what are we not, we're, we're omitting the rice. We're not doing any rice. I really talked to him about my desire to keep this, my birthday um, with planning, you know, my birthday, because I want it to be part of the way I do things, my lifestyle that I really am trying to incorporate. And it feels good. It's not like, it's not like I'm missing out on anything. And you feel almost empowered uh, again is that, you feel accomplished. You feel like you're taking control of what you want in your life, you know? So it's just working the whole thing, just working everything from a different perspective because I've been dealing with hard issues that I sort of brushed underneath the rug that I don't care how many diets I would have done in the past. Maybe I would have done it, but I was going to come back to an unhealthy weight because just because, you know, it's just the way I, it's, it's always been with me. And I just feel like this time is a different approach is what I'm saying. Okay. Moving on from that. Well, first of all, let me just tell you, as far as this week is, we've been doing 20 grams of carbs. That's what we did this week, 20 grams of carbs. Um, and I've been nailing it, but for Sunday, I don't think it's going to be, maybe it might be a little over the 20 grams, but again, that's where I'm saying like, that's okay. You know, my goal is 20 grams, but I understand there are exceptions sometimes and that's okay because I think the cake, it is, it is within keto friendly, but it's going to add, you know, it does add up, you know, and that's okay is what I'm saying. It's good. It's my birthday. I'm just making it a healthier version of it. So, uh, for, for that day, I don't think I'll be 20 grams, but we'll see. I'll let you know uh, next right. week. Okay. Let me talk about really quickly, uh, the egg situation. Do you guys remember I've been on a Situ eggs and I, we got, you know, we, we, we don't do really, really well with eggs. Well, I reintroduced the eggs and why did I reintroduce these eggs? <laughs> uh, because I was watching Dr. Ken Berry's live one day and, uh, you get to, you know, post questions and hopefully he reads them. But anyway, a lady put, wrote in there and she said, Dr. Ken Berry, she, she says, uh, you know, I'm allergic to eggs. Is there anything else that is good, like eggs, you know, that I can have? Because eggs are really full of a lot of good, good nutrition. And uh, he said, this is what he said to her. He said, how do you know you're allergic to eggs? Now, he says, unless you absolutely know you're allergic to eggs, I want you to try this. And he, he said, you know, for every three eggs, uh, I want you to have all three yolks and then eliminate either two of the whites or one of the whites. Uh, so if you have like six eggs, um, have all six of the yolks, but eliminate maybe three of the whites or uh, two of the whites. Uh, so he said that, and, and the reason why he said that is because in the egg white, there is an enzyme, I believe that, uh, really causes a little havoc on some of some people in the stomach, but also it's not really good to have all the whites. He said, because that particular enzyme uh, actually prevents the absorption of some of the nutrients in the yolk. So that's why you, she said, anyway, just cut the egg white out, you know, maybe like half and half, like do all the yolks, but then eliminate maybe like two or three of the whites. So I thought, oh, okay, that's interesting. I didn't know that. And then he also said, try, try really hard to buy pasture raised eggs. They do make a difference. They are different, but he said, try the other thing first, because I know you know, not everybody can afford pastured raised eggs, you know, and, and, and he understands that. So the other thing too, I started thinking about this guys, because every time I would have eggs, I would always have avocado with it. Okay. Avocado is very high in oxalates. Okay. Which for me raises havoc in my stomach. Uh, this is why I don't have tomatoes. 
tomatoes uh it has a lot of i think it's lectin in the tomatoes it just raises havoc in me when i heard dr ken berry had mentioned in one of his uh, another live or was on a video where he said he can't even eat avocados because it is an inflammatory response for him and i thought okay and i started i stopped the avocados okay and i haven't had any issues so i was thinking i would always have avocado when i have my eggs even when I was doing the BBBE diet, which was the bacon, beef, and butter, and egg diet, which is promoted by him, I would always have a little avocado in there. And sometimes it'd be a whole half of an avocado, sometimes a whole avocado. And oh my gosh. But I never correlated it. And recently, in recent months, I have eliminated that. And I thought to myself, I would always have these two together. So I am introduced the egg back. I've had them three times already, and I have not any Ish, have not had any issues so far so far and I cooked them sunny side up I cooked them sunny side up because I used to think it was because they were a little you know maybe I needed to cook them all the way like scrambled egg but even he says don't don't uh if you overboil the eggs you're losing a lot of the nutrients so he said try to eat them as runny as you can so I I did I tried the you know sunny side up and then I didn't uh, obviously I'm not having avocado and I've tried them three times already and I did the whole, I did three eggs to one, three yolks and one white and I haven't had any problem. So I'll keep you posted on that. That's exciting for me guys. Cause eggs are like really good, you know, like easy, fast and healthy, you know? So anyways, there's that. I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. Finally, let's go into our weight. Cause then I'm going to leave you with a quote. So let's go into my weight. The last time you saw me was uh, September 24th, which was Sunday, September 24th. And I came in at 192. What, what, what did I come in at? 192.8. Came in at 192.8. And so I weighed myself this past Sunday, which was the 1st of October. And this is what I weighed. So 191.8. 191.8 so we are getting closer to the 180s which i want to say guys every time i get close to that 10th the next 10th so when i was like 201 i couldn't wait to see with the 190s so i'm telling you every time i get close i'm there i'm at that mark i i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie i want to see that next 10th so i can't wait to get into the 180s uh this sunday coming up which is my birthday like i said i don't expect to see the 180s i really really don't i really really don't uh, I, I've been averaging about 1.4, 1 pound a week uh, loss. So uh, maybe on the following uh, Sunday, God willing, I can uh, see the 180s, which would be the 15th of October. I would like to see the 180s, okay? I really, now, really I forgot to mention, I wanted to mention something real quickly. Uh, my doctor's visit, I did go to the doctor's. I did get my blood work done, and he said that I am amazing i'm doing really really good and one of the things he explains to me why he the numbers that he saw all the way down the line uh, really he said um when somebody's been you know dealing with diabetes or hypertension or cholesterol issues whatever whatever it is the you know triglyceride issues whatever it is he says but in particular like diabetes hypertension cholesterol he says you will often see in the blood works a, another area where it's kind of not you know the numbers are, you know, we got to work on them kind of thing. You know, he says, but with you being that you've been hypertension since 38, but probably from before, he said, you probably had it from before, but you know, you've been dealing with hypertension due to chronic stress. He says, the numbers that I see on here are really actually amazing. So keep doing what you're doing. You know, he, I did had, I had already told him I was strain training. I did tell him I was ketovore, carnivore. He was just like, well, keep doing what you're doing. And I honestly, I don't want to see you back here for another year. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> he said, the numbers are really, really good. Now, one thing I did ask him though, and we'll talk about my A1C here in a minute, but one thing I did ask him is, um, you know, I'm reaching for the stars. I told him I'm reaching for the stars. He goes, okay. And I said, uh, I really have a hope that one day I can get off these blood pressure medications. He goes, yeah, I, I know, I know. And, and I, and I did tell him, I go, I understand that that may never be the case for me. He goes, okay. I go, but I'm going to reach for the stars right here. And he goes, all right. I go, what number? Give me a number that if I start to see these numbers consistently going down, 
that I come tell you and we could reevaluate. He says, okay, first of all, don't get off the pills <laughs> uh, on your own. Don't do that. And I go, no, I won't. If you start seeing this number, he said, I want you to take half of what you're doing until you get into see me. Okay. And then I can see your numbers. Um, but if you see this number right here ever, he says, then, then we'll e evaluate you again. I said, all right. All right. I go, cause I'm reaching for them stars. <laughs> he says, that's good. He said, good, good. I, you know, and it's, um, you know, God willing, I can, you know, that's a goal of mine. That's a goal of mine, you know, but I do feel good that I'm on these medications. I will tell you that right now too, uh, being on these, uh, maintenance medication and the new medication on when it comes to my BP, I will tell you, I don't feel as tired. So that says a lot, you know, that, that, that does, um, hopefully my heart is having a little bit of a, a break, you know, as he said, we need to give your 55 year old heart a break. That's what he said. All right. Now, real quickly, one of the numbers that I was actually very, very interested, um, was my cholesterol numbers, triglycerides and my A1C. Other ones are fine. No problem. So when he came down to my A1C, I was like, cringe. I was like, Ooh, you know, I was like, come on, come on, tell me. Uh, he says, wow. He says, it's a 5.1. That's really good. He says, that's really, really good. So I will tell you like in 2017, 20, 2016, 2017, around there, maybe, uh, I was diagnosed prehypertension or pre-diabetic. Pre I was, I was like 5.8, I believe was my A1C. And then, um, I had gone all the way down to 5.3. Uh, at some point, and then this last reading, this last reading that I did, which which last year, I believe, uh, I was 5.4. So I had gone up a point and I was like, Ooh, wow. Okay. But a lot of stress, you know, stress affects your, you know, your blood sugar and your A1C and all that. So anyway, uh, I, that's why I kind of really was watching that number and it was 5.1. And I was like, oh my gosh. So it got down. It went down from 5.4. So yes. So we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay, everybody, that is everything. Uh, I don't want to keep you guys too long because I know this video is already long. Feeling really, really good. I'm welcoming 55. I really, really am. I feel like I've, oh my gosh, there's so many things that I can't wait to tell you guys uh, and sit down here and tell you. A lot of positive things that have been happening, my personal issue, my personal problem, I'm going to come and I'm going to talk to you about that. Um, we're there, we're there. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to leave you with this quote. I'm going to leave you with this quote and I'll let you go. Aging is not lost youth, but a new stage of opportunities and strength. And that was a quote that was given to from improved health on one of her videos. And it resonated so much, so much. Um, because going into 55, uh, for the first time in a long time, it's not lost youth. It's not the missed opportunities, but it's looking back at the good part of 54, putting in a lot of work, a lot of tears, a lot of tears, gosh, a lot of feared moments, very fearful because like you, you second guess yourself, you second guess yourself. What are you doing? And you want to go back to what you know and what's normal that, that, okay, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, kick up the dirt. Let me, let me just keep going this way because it's safe, but it's not living, but it's safe. And I question myself a lot, but the more I grew in my faith, the more I fed my soul with God's love and fill that up with his love and, and let it in, um, because his is constant. It's not, it's a constant, you know, but it's what you allow and you believe it and you embrace it. Um, everything's coming together. And that was strength training. It's just that icing on that cake where you pull from wherever inside, inside your soul to get these, to push yourself. So it's not just pushing this muscle, it's pushing the brain. It's pushing the brain as well as the muscle. It's all connected. Everything about us is connected. Spirits, our body, our spirit, our everything, our mind, everything. And in strength training, it kind of all comes in together. But there are some things in my life, and I'm not gonna lie, like my oldest son, 
I miss him tremendously and that um, <clears throat> I pray to God that that will be resolved because I miss him something awful. So it's not like, you know, everything's so, you know, but it's, it's good. It's good. Okay. That is everything. I will be doing comparison shots, by the way, comparing, because when I said, when I hit uh, the 15 pound mark, which is what I am now, I am officially 15 pound loss. I was going to do comparison shots. So I'll be working on that video as well. Okay. And I'll have that up for you guys next week. All right, my friends, that is everything. Take care. See you soon. Bye.